I wanted to put together a little video to address a question that I get asked often as a teacher and as a painter. And that question is surrounding how to practice and improve your art. The simple answer I have to that, and, and this is the best thing that I think I do for myself as a painter, and I've been doing this for years, I paint from life a lot in a small sketchbook. Um, so let me just go over the materials quickly and then I'll show you some of the sketches. Uh, these are watercolors. I squeeze wet watercolor into these pa uh, panels, they dry, and then I can just reactivate it by putting water over top. This is a tube of white gouache. Now for those of you who, who don't know, uh, watercolor is a very transparent medium and gouache is like an opaque version of watercolor. So with just a little white gouache on the palette, I put it here, I can mix these watercolors transparently by themselves or mix it in with the white gouache and get more of an opaque consistency. So it's nice to play with that. I just use some random brushes. They're not expensive. This is like a $3 brush here. Price tag still on it. Pencil for sketching. And uh, these are just Conte sticks that I use for just some overlays over the top for some texture and dry brush effects, something like that. And uh, this just holds the water. So the sketchbook itself is a custom made sketchbook. I just go to the art store and buy paper. Um, this is just some hardcover I buy and I mark the front with a little white dot because it's identical on both sides. Um, so if I just open this up, these are what I do from life. And again, when I say from life, just in case it's unclear, I'm literally standing on this street in real life observing this subject matter. Uh, this painting happens to be from London. These sketches take about 25 to 30 minutes. And um, what's nice about painting from life, why I think it's so valuable, and this gets back to a question about digital painting. Probably most of us watching this video are digital painters and I'm a digital painter myself and I love digital painting. But one of the dangers with digital is it encourages us to stay inside a lot and say study from photographs or from reference from other artists or photos or whatever. And while that's all good, if you don't study directly from life, you're missing an element of raw engagement with the real thing. What I mean by that is, when you're outside in real life, and I'll just start flipping through some of these sketches, when you're outside in real life, your experience with the subject is very different from when you're looking at a photograph. So this is the London Tower, for example. And when, you know, when I'm painting this tower from real life, when I'm experiencing something myself, being out there, the detail's not what's important. It's where you, are, where you are focusing, for example, like this tower to me was more important than these ones. And I can adjust that painting to do so. I also really liked some of the color notes, these blues that were overlaying over top of some of these more earthy tones. Things that um, I felt were true to the experience of, of standing out there in real life that is hard to do from a photo. See, because when you look at a photograph, and let me just find another sketch that I think captures this. Here's some traffic. When you're looking at a photograph, first of all, you are one step removed from the source. So the information is not the raw material. When you're standing out there in real life, real life is alive. These cars were moving, obviously. Because these cars were moving, I didn't have the luxury of looking at each one and trying to figure out exactly where all the details were. I had to get the impression of the scene and to do that, you're calling on uh, like your experience of it, like, you know, in, in terms of like, okay, how can I arrange these cars in a way that feels like traffic? So these cars were not standing still for me, so I can hand pick like a little, de a little item from car A that's over there and a little item from car B that just zoomed by. Uh, the shapes they make made quick impressions on me and I arranged them in a way that I thought captured that experience. Because when you paint from a photograph, you are denied the element of experience. The camera has given you everything, but, but in a removed way, because a camera can only see detail. A camera can't tell you, uh, you know, how hot the sun is or what the air smelled like that day or how cold it is. You know, speaking of uh, cold, I'll show you another sketch. The, the last sketch in this book. This was from a new, uh, Neuschwanstein Castle in Germany. It was very cold when I painted this. My hands were literally freezing. So what that made me do is paint differently. I had to react, and as you can see, there are a lot of raw uh, mergings of color and, and you know areas where I'm using maybe more water than I would if I were comfortable inside a studio. You can see brush strokes that, to me, evoke the feeling of coldness. A painter is not just painting a picture of a castle. You're also painting what it might feel like to experience that subject, to, to be there in real life. 
And I think this sketch captures something, I'm not sure if this comes through to other people, but for me, I remember what it feels like painting in the cold. And that can inform my studio work and my commercial illustration and my concept art because I know what that coldness made me do as a painter. Here's uh, Buckingham Palace. Uh, what I like about these small sketches is, speaking of details, you cannot paint detail this small, it's impossible. For example, if you look at this crowd of people, these people are nothing more than individual dots. You know, I would take this Conte stick or a small brush and I would just put little, little strokes, like one little stroke equals a person. And I love that kind of economy that you can have with this simple traditional media setup. I was thinking composition here. I wasn't thinking detail. So one of the primary elements of composition you guys might be familiar with is like big, medium, small shapes. So like this tree is a nice big shape. The, uh, the castle itself, the palace itself is maybe a medium sized shape. These columns are also medium sized shapes. Uh, the ground is a medium sized shape. And then it's accented by all these smaller shapes that are the people. So when you're out there sketching like this, you're thinking about composing what you see into a picture that works. You're not thinking about, oh, I have to render the stripes on this guy's shirt because that's what it looks like. Um, you're thinking about composition and um, being out there with traditional media, which is pretty limited, right? You can't do a whole, you can't do as much as you can with digital, I think, because digital, we have undos, we have layers, we have high resolution. This doesn't have any of that. You, you are very limited in what you can do. So it forces you to engage with the subject in a more in-depth way is the best way I can say it. Again, it, it calls back to this idea of experiencing the subject. Let me just go through some more of these. Um, this one, you know, I painted that while I was waiting for a bus. And as a result, it's just a quick impression. I liked the shapes I saw. I was not interested in a photorealistic rendering. I was just interested in capturing this shape before the bus got there. You can see the effect of a speedy painting that happens when you do that. This painting below it in uh, Brussels. This is just simply about sunlight streaming in. It's a very cloudy day. You can see I'm very messily <laughs> indicating some clouds up here. Uh, that, those clouds are coming in and out. And when the, when the sun appeared behind the clouds, it caused this nice, you know, light shape on the building here and a shadow in the square. And that's what this sketch is about, that simple relationship between light and shadow. Um, this one, I think I actually overworked this one a bit. And this is important because when you're outside sketching, you will produce failures and you will produce paintings that don't live up to your expectations. This is one of those where I think what happened here is I got a little too caught up in all the shapes that are in this tree. I think I could have arrived at a much simpler statement here. And as you guys know, failure is a really useful learning tool. And when you're outside experiencing a scene, this is the thing. You're, so I'm sitting outside in this beautiful park, all these tree shapes, all these little dappled light shapes, there are leaves on the ground. How do you prioritize all that in a sketch that's this small that can communicate? And in this case, I think I got too caught up in all of the little shapes of the tree, which really didn't do much for me in the end. I think I could have arrived at a more simple statement, but only by being out there and having to deal with all those raw elements um, will you, I think, hone in on what is important and what is not. This sketch, I think I did a little better job at that kind of problem. This, uh, this sketch is another one from uh, London, just near Westminster Abbey. If I were looking at a photograph of this place, I would see every detail in every one of those windows. I would see the wrinkles, that's Winston Churchill right there. I would see the wrinkles on Winston Churchill's jacket. Right? I would see the, the stripes on this, on this woman's dress. I would see all these things. But those are not what the scene is about when I'm sitting out there. When I'm sitting out there, this scene is about noise. It's about this visual noise of a park that's populated by people, framed, uh, you know, Winston Churchill being framed by the facade of this hotel. And, you know, just a few architectural elements that kind of give you that London flavor. That's what it's about when you're experiencing it from life. So that's what I'm painting. And again, uh, I think these sketches encourage you to capture something beyond just a picture. You're capturing how you also feel about what you're painting. And uh, you know, I think this sketch is successful for that reason. That one didn't work out so well. I'll just skip through that. This is a, a quick sunset. You guys know sunsets move incredibly quickly. Um, I was just struck by the, the big shadow being cast down this uh, shaft of trees here and you know that being reflected in the water. This light was gone in five minutes. So this sketch probably took me 10 minutes maybe. Um, and that's another benefit of this quick setup here that you see. You can get set up very quickly. It takes me a minute to you know pull this stuff out of my hiking bag and start painting.
And you can see this is also my journal. I make little notes underneath each sketch. Helps me, um, you know, I can look back at any one of these and kind of relive that moment of my life, which is pretty cool. It's like this visual journal that reminds you of all these experiences you have looking out in nature as, a, as an artist. Um, another thing, just speaking of experiencing a scene, these cars are moving again. And one of the things I did to evoke that sense of movement that I might not otherwise have done is it's just a simple act of losing edges. You see where this car is, where that car ends and the road begins is a very lost edge. It kind of just bleeds into itself. That was a conscious decision I made because as, as, I, was, as I was looking at the street, I wasn't seeing individual cars. Those cars were racing by, right? So I imitated that with edges. Whereas when you're, again, studying from a photograph, it's very hard to make those decisions because the photo is not prompting you to think that way. Um, this scene to me was about this church, of course. Not the trees there, not the cars there, not the people. It's about the church. So I arrange my elements, you know, thusly, <laughs> just to frame what's important and everything else you step back in importance with, you know, uh, various tools. Here's one from Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, big shapes in the buildings, smaller shapes in the awnings. Those shapes are kind of repeated, small shapes in the cars. Uh, you know, looking at the elements of real life and composing them into a picture that works. Uh, you have to have big, medium, small shapes, but not necessarily detail. Like I, I wouldn't consider there to be detail in this scene, even though it looks intricate. Um, you know, this is a fairly high resolution area. There's a lot of small shapes in there, but I'm certainly not painting details of bricks. I might have indicated a few there just to uh, tip off the viewer that this is made of brick, but you're, that's not what these sketches are about. So, you know, here's one and another one from, uh, from Sweden. You know, these uh, swatches of, of paint in the buildings were just this brush, big brush strokes, this dry brush. Uh, even the boats, I probably had this brush here, and I was just trying to get the boat shapes in one or two strokes to capture that feeling. Um, again, it was very cold when I painted this, so that prompts you to paint a certain way. And it prompts you to hone your, uh, your eyes and your brain and your brush to get the thing done quickly. Anyway, um, I encourage everyone to do this. It will enrich your art in a way that is just not possible from photographs, I believe. So get out there with a sketchbook. You know, you can use my setup. Uh, I recommend all these materials, they're really nice. And, um, you know, go out and paint a, a million boats and simplify them down into some very clear, readable shapes. So that's about all. Thanks for watching and happy painting.